Hello everyone. So from today onwards, we'll be starting with digital filters. We have already seen the comparison between digital and analog filters in our last class. Now onwards, we'll be discussing digital filters, especially two types of filters, FIR and IR. FIR is finite impulse response filter and uh, IR is infinite impulse response. We'll compare these two in today's class. So let us start the discussion. First point is the output. All right. So output we generally represent with y of m. Okay. If you see the output of FIR, we can uh, define it as weighted sum of the input, means past and present input values. All right. Means the dependence of output will be only uh, inputs only. Right. But for IR filters, if you see, it is the weighted sum of your input values, right, past and present input values, as well as it depends on the past output values, right. So due to this dependence, it will have infinite impulse response, all right. And these recursions will last forever in theory. So this is the reason why these system FR systems are non-recursive in nature, all right. But for IR filters, it will be recursive type system. All right. And FIR systems can be designed using convolution equation only. Right. But we'll have to use difference equation to model or design these filters, IR filters. Okay. All right. Next thing we'll compare is the system function or transfer function, you can say. So these are the two system functions. This is for FIR filters and this one is for IR filters. All right. I can uh, clearly see that uh, in FR filters, we will be having only zeros, all right. But for IR filters, both zeros and poles are available, all right. So that is the reason why these systems, I mean the IR filters offers lots of flexibility in types of systems that we can accomplish with IR filters, right zeros are only having zeros is not that flexible okay the next thing we'll compare is the impulse response of two filters right as you can see for fir filters we have uh, some constant value only right and that too is finite i mean that is between zero to m all right but uh, for ir filters as you can see this value you can say is the geometric sequence or a form of geometric sequence all right and you know the behavior of geometric sequence, they never decays to zero. Okay, so this will result the response to be infinite in nature. All right, now we can conclude from here that as the impulse response of this filter is infinite, that is why it is known as infinite impulse response filter. All right, whereas the impulse response of this filter is finite, that is why it is finite impulse response filter. Okay, okay. if we talk about the phase response of the filters, so FIR is having linear phase response, whereas IIR is having non-linear phase response, all right. And we have uh, discussed in detail in uh, last lecture that how these linear phase responses makes this filter quite compatible for uh, use in medical applications and control applications, okay. And we know it actually preserves the shape of the input signal, right. Whereas IR filters can be used for RF applications because of its non-linear behavior. All right. Next is number of samples or coefficients to be used. Right. If we see for FIR filters, we need to have more samples, right, which we denote with M. But uh, in case of IR, the coefficients required is less. All right. That is due to the fact that uh, for FIR filters, we will be having only zeros available. Right. But for IR filters, there are zeros and poles both available. Okay. Therefore, for FIR filters, we'll, we'll be having less placements in Z plane for FIR filters. But we'll, we'll be having arbitrary placements for IR filter in Z plane. Okay. So this is the reason why FIR filters does not offer much flexibility in terms of frequency responses. Right. Whereas, uh, if we consider IR filters, its flexibility is more. Right. This is the reason why it is used for very high speed RF applications. Okay, let us come to the stability part. These filters, I mean, FIR filters are always stable. They do not, do not have any feedback path, right? But the IR filters, they can be stable or they can be unstable, right? That totally depends on the feedback type. Okay, 
Now let us understand the structural differences between these two filters, right? These diagrams are generally known as the block diagrams for filters, right? FIR and IR. You know, the output of FIR is this thing, the weighted sum of inputs, I mean, uh, past inputs and present inputs, okay? So this equations must be fulfilled uh, in here, okay? So let us see how we'll draw this. Now we know that uh, M can take value, uh, sorry, K can take values from 0 to M, right? So we'll be varying this uh, from, uh, varying the value of K from 0 to M, right? In first case, you can see uh, this is our input, all right, and uh, we have introduced one delay. This we call as delay z to the power minus one. Up to here, we are getting same accent. Okay, now we have uh, delayed this by one unit, right? So it can be represented by n minus one, right? Likewise, twice the delay is n minus two. Likewise, the delay will go on increasing, and it will uh, get delayed up to m. Okay, and you can see in this equation that each delayed element and xn itself will get multiplied with some coefficient b, right, bk. So for uh, k equal to 0, your xn will get multiplied with b0, right, directly. And there will be no delay element. But uh, when k is 1, there will be unity delay, right. And this x n n minus 1 will get multiplied multiply with b1, right. Likewise, x n minus 2 will get multiplied with b2 and in similar way x n minus 1 will get multiplied with bn and finally these all values will get added up here right and will uh, give you yn so from here you can uh, easily conclude that this yn purely depends on the present value of xn and the delayed values of xn all right or past values of xn okay Whereas, if we see IR filters, in infinite impulse response filters, you know, this is the equation of output, right? This is Xn, the present value of Xn as well as the past value of Xn's, right? Inputs, right? Likewise, it also depends on the past values of outputs also, right? So, we'll have two different structures, right? One is for this one, this part, right? And another structure is for this part, all right? This is for a delayed element of y and this is for xn and delayed elements of xn okay the first part uh, i mean this part if you can see that is the same uh, what we were performing for finite impulse response resistors okay so this will perform in similar way this will be done in similar way right you have to uh, produce delays unity delays right so this will uh, get x n minus 1 and it will get multiplied with b1 Likewise, from here, xn will get multiplied with b0 directly. This way, uh, xn minus 2 will get multiplied with b2 and xn minus m will get multiplied with bm. Okay, and will get added up at one place. Okay, if you consider the second part of this equation, that is delayed version of yn. So, here it is yn, the output. Okay, and this output depends on this thing, right? So, we'll delay this yn. Right, it's a sort of feedback type of structure you can see. Okay, so yn is delayed by one unit, and you can see yn minus one, right? The one unit delayed, delayed version of yn, and it will get multiplied with minus of a1, right? Because minus is coming in front, so this will become a1 and it will uh, multiply with minus also. Okay, this way we can uh, introduce more delays, like uh, twice delay, uh, two times delay we have introduced, okay, and we'll multiply with minus a2 and it will go up to n so n times delay right and it will multiply with minus an and will get it get added up in this place right and what we get at this place and this place that is the same equation this summation and here we get this summation and finally these two will get added up right and will result yn at this place okay so you can see the difference between structures all right we will discuss these filters in details one by one Right. Till then, thank you and have a good day.